Morning, morning. As you see, the packs are still chunky. My pack is about magpie's height while sitting down. Our little bush behind us actually worked out quite well last night. It was hot camping down at 5,000 feet. I think we're at like 5,200. Um, today's August 17th. We should have about six days left. I think we got it somewhere around 130 miles left, 140. So today, some cross country. Um, I think we stay in this kind of like basin area. I don't know how much climbing we do yet today. I think it's like 30 miles to Highway 60. And then after Highway 60 is when we climb. So we'll see what we get into. I probably made herself a little chocolate drink. Oh. She also did not poop herself in the night, which is a positive. Yeah, the water tasted really bad though, so I didn't drink very much last night. Didn't I only slept about three hours, and I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Time to eat and drink. Yes. <laughs> Some big. So somebody said that people put fish in these things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So a couple, couple fish in this windmill water source. The tire is honestly better though. Wow, there's a lot of fish. What happens when the water dries up? Let's hope not. There's a lot of fish in this little pond. Counted at least six. I know. Huh. So, for this section, up towards Mount Air, Highway 60. Don't get too excited to crush through some miles. A lot of the roads that are labeled roads on the map is this. Very, very old, kind of the land has reclaimed them type roads. So, your two track stepping is going to be more likely cross country. Oh, I got the burps. All right, we're gonna keep going. So this is Rancho Grande Well. Um, a lot of tires lately. Honestly. Alkaline water as well. Yeah, very alkalinated uh, water. Nice little spot though. You got some shade if you so desire. You got some water. So yeah, about from mile 630 to 640, you're sitting pretty with water. Every few miles you pass one of these tires. as you will hello it's really interesting all of a sudden the desert just completely changed um i don't know if you're noticing the same thing but we've been walking through stuff at like 5,000 feet of elevation and we've been slowly climbing so we're right around 6,000 now and could be a different location could be a lot of things but all of a sudden the desert's become filled with just red that thousand feet of elevation drastically changes it Oh, Hi. also red. Well, pink. Also pink. Well, the back alkaline of her knee, waters. back of the knees are her pink. Yeah. Yeah, that alkaline water is messing with my stomach too. I wonder. Should we check if this is alkaline? Uh, the windmill's not alkaline in like another five miles, maybe. 
I mean, this probably is not alkaline either. It's probably rainwater. Yeah, but it's also cow water. Ew, That's true. But yeah, really pretty. The desert's starting to change as we climb, climb, climb. So this is Buffalo Well. There's a tire that has water again. Looking to see if we could have found where this was pumping directly into, but I can't figure out where it is. Yeah, it's not filling up this cistern. So there's a pipe that it's getting fed to, but I don't know where. Uh, mile 637-ish. There's also a windmill in about three miles that says it's the best water of the section, so. Um, there is water here if you need it. It's in the tire before the windmill, but we might keep on checking it out. This is Agua de la Torres, uh, mile 640-ish, and apparently the least alkanated water source along this last, I don't know, 20 mile stretch. So get it while the getting's good. Also, I would recommend filling up here a good amount because water starts to get a little tricky past here. Um, there's Apparently somebody's house in nine miles that you can knock on the door and ask for water. But barring that, it gets a little, gets a little far and few between with the water sources. So drink some less alkanated water, fill your belly up, fill your pack up, keep on cruising. We're gonna use this spot for lunch time. So I think this is the water. There's also probably some tanks over there, but this is what we're gonna grab. All right. Lunch time. So, we were going to use that spot as a lunch spot, but we're going to walk a little bit further and plop down because we were sitting there and the person who owns this property, the Lee family, Mr. Lee, showed up. Um, super friendly guy, really happy to let hikers uh, cross his property and very knowledgeable about his property and the surrounding area. So, we're sitting there. He actually turned on the well for us so you could get straight clean no filter no problem water and he said for other hikers um, that there's a control panel that you can also turn it on and turn it off yourself if you so desire so the, uh, the pipe turn on the small pipe yeah and the small pipes turn on valve is like it's off. The, yeah, it's off of the wind now. Just to get it. Yeah, so super awesome guy. Mr. Lee, I don't know if you're going to find this. I don't know how you would. But I'm going to just say thank you anyway for letting hikers cross your property. Um, yeah. He also awesome. informed us that there's a tropical storm system on the way. Oh, uh, yeah. So we'll have to see what we're going to do about that. I don't know anything about tropical storms. He says, like, well, they're like hurricanes, but not in the tent. I don't know anything about hurricanes. They're baby hurricanes. I don't know anything about hurricanes. It's, a, like, it's a tornado with water. That I understand. It's a water tornado, so. So we might need to uh, triple zero, triple with zero. Mount Air. So, yeah. Um, when we were leaving Sakaro, I saw on the weather that let's see, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and today's Wednesday. Thursday and Friday and Saturday was gonna have a lot of rain, and I'm just like, oh, okay, that's just monsoon season, no big deal. Just kind of misting but, all day like it has been. Yeah, but apparently it's not just monsoon, it's a oh. tropical storm. So we're gonna get close to Highway 60. Apparently, Mr. Lee said we're about 14 miles away. Um, and he sense. said there's only one little mile section of cross country that will be slow going. So we might try to get to Highway 60 today. 
Maybe going to Mount Air. Mount Air. Thankfully, we carried six days of food if we're going to go into town. The Grand Enchantment just does not want it to let us finish. It just keeps on saying, you ain't going nowhere. So, yeah, we're going to figure it out. We're going to go also find a wind block to get a little bit. Mount, Mount Air. All right, we're going to go find a wind block for some lunch. Cool, cool. Again, Mr. Lee, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I still like it. Let's see. Do I have chocolate all over my face? <laughs> I do, no, don't I? No, you don't have any chocolate on your face. I had to lick, I bought trail mix I thought had M&Ms, but it actually just had like chunks of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I had to lick it out of the package. Lick the bag. Time for a little cross country. I believe we have to somehow make it up and over or through these cliffs. Don't know what, but time for a little bit of cross country. This is near the area called the Gray Cliffs, I believe. If you've been following along, you know how we do on the Grand Enchantment. Follow a barbed wire fence. I believe it just cuts straight up through here. It's gonna be a climb. Ready for a climb? No. <laughs> it's ready for you. How was your climb? Buddy. <laughs> that was a steep climb. So that big cloud over there is, I think it's raining on mountain air right now. We were able to check the forecast at the top of that climb. Um, today there's supposed to be some isolated storms. Tomorrow there's supposed to be two or three hours of storms. Um, Friday, again, about the same thing. Saturday's supposed to be the consistent storm day. So, right now, it looks like we're gonna continue hiking. Um, we're not gonna have to run into mountain air for a few days. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Mr. Lee, being a farmer, I trust his judgment a lot because he has to know the land and know the weather to tend the land. But, as of what the forecast said, it doesn't seem terrible right now, so as of right now, I think we're going to continue hiking instead of trying to seek shelter in mountain air. Um, if we can get somewhere by Saturday that we can access a road to hitch, maybe we might, but not right now. Right now we continue. Getting close to the end of this cross country. Um, should be able to get up and over that rise. We should be okay. Then we connect into road for a few miles. Um, yeah, even though today was flat, quote unquote flat, still got a little flavor flavor to it. A little bit of Grand Enchantment flavor.
Nope. Nice. Whoa, 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 folks. Time for a little bit of road walking. So we should be passing um, some folks' property that they want us to get water from. And without their, their help, it turns into like a 20 mile potential waterless stretch. Um, some of the sources listed say it might have it, but without these folks coming up, it's potentially very waterless. So hopefully we can uh, just fill from their spigot. I mean, it seems like we'd be able to. Yeah, they seem okay with it. I bet um, Mr. Lee, who we met, probably texted or called his neighbors and let him know that we were coming. Oh uh, yeah, he probably did. It's not like he has a lot of neighbors. <laughs> no. All right, cross country over. That was actually some was pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, that was pretty legit cross country. Yeah, it wasn't too brushy. So, now a little two-track stepping. So, we're just leaving a very friendly house. Out of respect for the owners, I don't know if they want us putting it on here. Um, but if you do the Grand Enchantment Trail, you'll know what house I'm talking about. It's in the water report. It's in the water report as well as, um, it's like the last quote unquote. It's, it's the only house on yeah. this road. You will find it. Yeah, it's the only house on this road as well as it's like the last official water for like 20 miles um, near Mountain Air area. So for those folks, thank you so much. Very friendly lady answered the door, knocked on the door. She let us fill the water up at the tap. Um, or the spigot outside. And funny enough, she was uh, the sister-in-law of the gentleman that we met earlier today. Very small world out in this New Mexico area. So. Yeah, I figured he probably called ahead and let her know that we were on the way. I think so. She didn't seem surprised to see us at all. No. So we're gonna, I think we hiked this road for another half mile. And honestly, it's weird. There's gonna be some cross country that we do. Or we could just, yeah. So what I was saying is, technically you could follow this road out to Highway 60 and then cut up to get back to the trail. Um, but we've learned that Mr. Tucker routed the, this route in a very um, official way, well, quote unquote official way. He routed this route in a sensible way because every time we've been like, we thought we knew better than him. Every time we're like, oh, we'll just take the road. It's a shortcut. It uh, either doesn't exist or it's like, no joke, private property, we're gonna shoot you. Yeah, so we don't uh, know. So we're not doing that. Yeah, we don't know better than Mr. Tucker. So instead we're about to take um, three more miles of bushwhack, maybe somewhere in the air. And then it connects us into another two track that will ultimately cross Highway 60. But um, that mountain, I believe is Mount Air, Mountain Air, Sebola National Forest. That's where we're trying to go to. But we got four liters of water each. Um, it's like 6.30. Hike for another hour, find some camp. Cool, cool. Thank you again to both the ranch families that let you, one, walk across their property, and two, are super friendly and provide water if you do need it. So, thank you all. Thank you. Well, it's 7.48, um, we are officially set up in camp. So the schwack after the house that gives you water is, it has a lot of great camp spots. It's not a bad schwack. No, it's also not a bad schwack. It's a lot of this open kind of cross country. But what I was gonna say is, I was hoping we could find an area that was more covered by branches, like up top, but with the clouds coming overhead, we were already pushing the limit to not being getting rained on. So we called it. There's probably a beautiful spot up ahead. Um, 
but again didn't want to push our luck too much and honestly this is better than last night we got wind block here wind block there wind block there and we won't get flooded so yeah we're doing oh, we're doing about 24 25 miles a lot of two track a lot of cross country honestly not easy for just quote unquote flat. I think we climbed, I don't know, we're at like 6,300 tonight, which is nice because it's gonna be a little cooler than last night. And yeah, we beat the rain, that's the main thing. Also, 